Do not adjust your digital device. What you are about to see and hear may shock and appall you. Join our hosts as they encounter countless thrills, spills, chills, and hilarity as they explore the very weirdest in pop culture. The following media is so strange, so beyond the scope of what is normal, it will make you ask the question, why does this exist? Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Why Does This Exist? I'm Chris. And I'm Rob. And today we are going to be talking about a uh, well, a relatively newer uh, item. Uh, we're going to be talking about a band today from uh, Canada um, called uh, Blood Ceremony. And if you know who they are, then you know that they're pretty damn cool. And if you don't, well, prepare to be amazed. Uh, we are Why Does This Exist? We are a podcast that talks about the very weirdest in pop culture, whether it's a TV show like we just did with uh, In Living Color or uh, Kingdom Hearts, which for some reason is the is is our fastest growing YouTube video in terms of everything. So thank you for those of you who listened and thought it was cool, all eight of you. Um, and yeah, do all the other things that you got to do for a YouTube channel. We are at 49 subscribers. So if you could, if somebody could uh, save us and just hit 50 or somebody stop us and just hit 50 anyway. The choice is yours, but not really. All the other things that you could do to support the channel and give us money and all that other stuff, it's in the descriptions. I'm not going to get into it because none of you listen! <laughs> in fact, 97% of you are not even subscribed anyway. Actually, I think, like, of, of the total people, 97% are not subscribed. And I think out of all of the regular listeners... I think maybe point one of you are point zero one. So, yay, you, whoever you are. Anyway, that's the news. Here's the weather. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge from a ragtag group of rogues. So let's get on with the goddamn show. Rob, what is blood ceremony? You introduced them to me mm -hmm. by suggesting them, and I think Yo. they're pretty damn awesome. Yeah, so they're pretty good. Tell the people what they are and who they are and everything that you can. Uh, they're a uh, Canadian metal band. Uh, they formed in 2006 in Toronto. And uh, their uh, name comes from uh, a 1973 Spanish film, uh, Ceremonia Sangrienta, or Sangrienta, uh, which is literally translates as blood ceremony. Um, <clears throat> anyway, they are... Uh, a uh, doom slash psychedelic rock metal band kind of it's 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 an interesting sound it's almost like a combination between like old school black sabbath uh and uh jethro tull and a number of other bands in that vein um and basically uh they've uh been active since 2006 uh but and their first album blood ceremony came out in 2008 uh, they've had since then uh, four more albums. The the most recent one came out last year. It was called The Old Ra Ways Remain. Um, but overall, just a really great band. Um, they're, they have a really unique sound. And they kind of like... So, you know, while the new wave of thrash metal was going on, there seemed to be also a new wave of doom metal building. And I would say Blood Ceremony is a part of that largely um there's a lot of bands kind of in that vein that came out around the same time like jess and the ancient ones jex thoth there's a number of them uh you know all, all with different various varying sounds uh i think they all kind of have their own like little unique sounds and stuff like that and you know people i i would say of, of all of the the more modern doom metal bands blood ceremony has a way cleaner sound um, there's some of the other like sleep and 
I mean, they're kind of old, but like, you know, in, in that term, in like Jack Stoth have a very like dirty, heavy kind of sludgy sound. Whereas yep. Blood Ceremony goes on like with a more melodic and very clean tone guitars. Yeah, well, um, I think the interesting thing is that a lot of it's like you see like bands like a lot of the like the bands in this like new in this like um, new wave of doom kind of thing. Um, they. They take after certain decades. Yes. Right. Like that's kind of the sound that you get from all these different bands. They borrow heavier from like one decade to the next. Yeah. Like and not like in terms of their like overall sound, but also their style. So like um, that's I think that's kind of the neatest thing about. And also the cool thing about Doom is like you can kind of throw that anywhere and everybody will kind of be like, OK, with it on like any bill. It's kind yeah. of neat. So like you so like Doom is like a really unique one in itself. But we could do an episode on Doom metal at some point anyway. Yeah. But. Like Blood Ceremony takes it; they take after the seventies stuff, and very much like, so in everything that they do, even like sixties stuff, like yeah. with their keyboard presentation and like their flute stuff. Yeah, like obviously going from Jethro Tull, but also you hear like a bit of the Doors. You also yeah. hear like there's also a lot of Black Sabbath and Pentagram stuff in there too. Well, it's very um, psychedelic rock. It so is. It, it could really fit in with like the late sixties, early seventies kind yes. of like early metal like uh coven very much like you know coven-esque a little bit yeah um, i mean even yeah. in their music videos their music videos are very like classic old school like you could probably like if someone like threw this onto like a 70s band compilation and you weren't paying attention you probably like you'd probably just you probably would just accept you probably just wouldn't question it at all yeah, if you like just saw this, but next to like, you know, any like seventies doom band, like a Uriah Heap or something like that, you would yes. you wouldn't bat an eye. But there's other doom bands that they'll take after like, if they're a little dirtier, they'll go for like a nineties kind of sound. So they'll be a little bit more like, um, uh, oh gosh, um, why am I drawing a blank? They're my favorite one from the nineties. They were on earache, um. Uh, oh my god! In the deadbeats, Lee. No, no. Uh, what? Why Weed can't I? Weedian. No, uh, the, the the original Napalm Death Singer. Uh, Cathedral. There we go. Oh, Cathedral. Yeah. Why can't I? Why couldn't I say that? Yeah. Uh, they'll they'll take after Cathedral or Typo Negative. Um. But and then you'll just hear like, and then you'll get some people who like will kind of get like an. There wasn't. There weren't really. There's not like a lot of like notable doom metal bands in the 80s but you'll see a lot from the 90s um yeah. like if they're going like a little bit more death and roll you'll hear like um you'll hear some like trouble stuff yeah um but well, you can also like but you'll also hear quite stuff. a yeah but you'll also hear quite a bit from like 80s stuff if you can find it um yeah and like 80s doom 80s doom is weird because it's like it's not 70s and it's not 90s and it's kind of caught up in like it's kind of caught up in all the other things going on. Yeah. So it's like in between being new wave of British heavy metal and like yeah, being like hard being like hard rock and psychedelic rock. So like Doom is quite literally between a rock and a hard place in the 80s. But I in think... the 90s is where you really get the crazy stuff. But Blood Ceremony sticks to the 70s and 60s stuff. And I think that's like the coolest thing about them. Yeah. And well, I think uh, Black Sabbath is a good litmus test for like the sounds of doom yes. because they changed their sound significantly in the 80s after Ozzy left. Uh, you know, it was still Black Sabbath, but like the Dio stuff sounds way different than the Ozzy stuff did. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, like if. Like, if the Aussie stuff is Doom, then, like, the Dio stuff is clearly metal. Yeah, like, new wave of British heavy metal kind of almost sounding. Yeah, um, where, like, the Aussie stuff is, like, a lot more closer to rock. Yeah. Well, I would even say the Aussie stuff is, like, there are, like, really Doomy songs on the Aussie, like... Um, oh, yeah. Electric Funeral and, and like, a whole bunch of them. It, obviously, you know, the title track, Black Sabbath, sure. the Doomiest Doom song ever. <laughs> Doomed. <laughs> yeah. Uh but yeah, uh Blood Ceremony really fits that 70s kind of vibe. Uh and is all, you know, very reminiscent of like even like Jethro Tull with like 
uh, <clears throat> yeah, you have the the lead singer, uh, Alia O'Brien, who is also their flautist and organist, and I believe plays violin on the tracks that have violin as well. So she's that is a so cool. Good yeah, for her. Yeah. And I believe used to, I don't know if she still plays live, but I have seen live videos of her playing violin live as well as the flute. And like, she kind of has like this whole setup where she has like a keyboard and like a little stand for her violin and a little stand for her flute, you know? Wow. Um, but yeah, it switches and, and also sings, which is pretty impressive that she could switch between all those different instruments and sing. Oh yeah. Um, well, she was originally just the flautist when she joined and the original yes. um the original singer um had um had left. Uh, yeah, to, I don't like, even I don't even know. I'm not even seeing a name like listed here cuz yeah, I, I don't I, I don't even think been, the like, original singer appeared on any of their albums. So she left fairly no. early as far as I know. Yeah, and like she was just the flautist and then she just took over. So the the original singer um who's so whose name I guess has sadly been lost to time. Yeah. Um is like well they they moved to India. Yeah. For whatever reason. And then the band took off. I mean, I don't know if it was for work or for family or if they just wanted to live in India and travel the world. I I don't know. But yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, so uh, Ali O'Brien is actually a very well-educated person also. She, I believe, has a PhD in ethnomusicology. Um, oh, my God. And has done... Uh, I, I was trying to actually find her website. I don't know if it's still up anymore, but I remember I, I a while back, I, I was reading her website, and she's actually done, like, actual, like, anthropological research in, like, the Middle East, North Africa, Central Asia, um she's she knows how to do like an like play a number of like uh, uh ethnic instruments from those areas um and i believe studied at the university of toronto i i think she actually is taught also um there wow. as a professor uh so she's like you know not just like oh, okay i'm gonna play in a metal band like actually she really knows her stuff uh when it comes to various uh forms of music and um also uh, did a lot of with uh, working with uh, Sufi music, uh, which is, of course, uh, you know, Sufism is a is a mu a, mu a Muslim sect. Um, so she's she studied that. So she's done quite a lot of extensive uh, work outside of the, the band um, in, in music. And wow. it is a very, very accomplished uh, musician. Not to say that any of the other members of Blood Ceremony are also not accomplished, because they all are very good. Like, uh, you know, <clears throat> all they're all top-notch uh, players. Um, and you know, like I said, it's it's they they bring their own kind of unique sound. Like, yeah, they they obviously are inspired by that '70s uh, doom metal sound. But yeah. they also I mean, really well, have. Well, I guess the own... '80s ish sound could be like Saint Vitus, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that would kind of be the closest thing that I could think of is like what that '80s doom sound sounded like, which yeah. you get saying by this there. Yeah, which you uh, could hear a little bit in um, in uh, Blood Ceremony as well, but yeah. not as prevalent as like the '70s stuff. But go no, on, it's definitely the '70s. And 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 O'Brien has actually cited Jethro Tull as her fa one of her favorite bands. Uh, so I, I obviously that influence is very much there um but you know she's also listed black sabbath uriah heap witchfinder general electric wizard you know basically all the all the, the usual suspects you would think of when when talking about sure. doom metal um so you know it's it's definitely you know a unique sound you know and, and combining all these different elements and and the, the things that she's learned studying music you know, and and be, being a PhD in uh, ethnomusicology, uh, like you know, I, I think it really brings something to the table with the writing. And I yeah. think you see that especially on their later albums, like uh, you know, whereas like the first album or like uh, which was the self-titled Blood Ceremony, um, you you look at like uh, Living with the Ancients and Lord of Misrule, especially like there's definitely a, a I would say Lord of Misrule 
the, between the Eldritch Dark and Lord of Misrule is the is the biggest contrast in the evolution of the sound, uh, mm-hmm. because their Lord of Misrule, which was their 2016 album, um, they really went with like almost like a 60s, uh, 60s like psychedelic rock vibe. Like if you listen to you know like the the first Coven album or uh, you know any of those like you know. Uh, Pictures of Matchstick Men by uh, I forget who actually sang that originally, uh, but that was you know a very typical like '60s psychedelic rock album, or even like the early Pink Floyd stuff. Uh, uh, status quo was the band. status quo. Yeah, okay, yeah, status quo. Uh, you listen to like Lord of Mistral, and you really hear that '60s sound. It's like very, very much there. Very the the influence is very heavy. Uh, so you know, there's there's definitely you know like i said uh, a contrast w- between the different styles that that they bring to the table mm. well i, I mean the ethno the ethnomusicology degree like at just everything that she does to understand her flu- like 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 uh, i'm i've seen in this interview where she calls the uh, it might be several interviews where she calls the flute an extension of herself yeah and she's really been able to grow and understand that instrument, and I guess kind of live with that instrument in such a way where it's become like a piece of her, um, yeah. which we all as musicians, we all say that, you know, our instruments are like extensions of us and pieces of us at like at one point or another. But like you but like specifically for her, there is like there is a there is like a very different bond that she has than most people like this is like a bond where someone would like attach a, a, a portion of their soul to it and like if they were to like pass on or something they would like they would enchant the flute like, like they would enchant an object and she would like and I, I feel like she has that connection where like she could enchant or haunt a flute like yeah. when she goes to the great beyond yeah. in a way like her essence will be em- embodied into that flute and like she'll be able to like live eternally through it uh yeah. it's kind of it's really neat but also like the ethnomusicology and everything that she's learned she's able to pour that into each album and song and she's able to capture the right period for where this tone should be yeah Right, like, like when I was listening, when I was listening to some of their songs, I was like listening, and I like I didn't even realize it until a couple of listens in to like various songs. But like when there's a guitar solo, you can subtly hear her doing like a flute backing for it. Yeah, and I thought that that was really interesting because it's just something that you don't commonly hear ever, if not at all. Like usually, yeah. Like the organ, I could see the organ being like the backing, which of course it is, but I never expected to hear the flute on that. And that was something that kept me going back to that part of the music. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, especially on uh, the Eldritch Dark uh, is, I think, probably my favorite album, uh, which came out in 2013. And that very much had like a folk influence, like a very, all the songs sound very like folk rockish. And, um, but like you, you see, the instrumentation on it is like really amazing and really not common for like a metal band. Like like you said, with no, not at all. Heavy violins and like you see that on like folk metal bands a lot. Uh, you know, you'll see like those kinds of instruments, but it's not very common at all. And and flute especially, I, I think flute is like one of the rarest instruments to hear in a in a heavy heavy metal or a rock oh, band. Oh, of course. Like even I mean, folk- I, I, like even folk metal bands, like they use their obscure instruments, but like you don't really hear a flute on that stuff. Yeah, like you yeah, might I hear th- a hurdy gurdy, which is even rarer. But like, you are really it's, like, like you know, like the one that obviously comes to mind is Jethro Tull. Uh, yeah, you know the famous rock bands that that use flow. But it, a lot of people consider Jethro Tull more of like a prog rock band than anything. You know? Oh yeah, uh, for sure. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely you know they really do well with their instrumentation, uh, and and it, you know for for such a small band because it's really only four members like literally, mm-hmm. you you have uh, 
Ollie O'Brien, as we said, on on vocals, flute, and organ, and then occasional violins. And then Sean Kennedy on guitars, Lucas Gadke on bass, and Michael Carrillo on drums. That's it. Like it's not like they have a whole backing band full of like different instruments. Which usually, when we you see a folk metal band that has these unique instruments, they have like extra players that are playing those instruments. You know, they're not like just the one. You know, not one person just playing it all. Right, and look, the fact that they have such a big sound is a testament to just how many layers that they're putting on the music. But also, yeah, they're not oversaturating the music. They're like they're the arrangements make sense, yeah. and they don't, and like the levels don't drown each other out. Where like you hear like little, you hear like things here and there. Like my favorite is like whenever a band will like layer something in such a way that like you hear something different every time, yeah. but it's always there. Yeah. And like, it's never being drowned out. Like, like I used Evan Townsend as an example, just because he just notoriously like will put like 50 something layers of like different arrangements on a track. And every time that you hear it, you'll hear something different that yeah. goes with it. It's pretty wild. Um, We'll we'll do an episode on him, like someday. He's a yeah. fascinating person. Also yeah. Canadian, probably also very nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like I I didn't know anything about this band before you had brought this up as a uh, as a suggestion for the for the schedule when we were going over the schedule of like just episodes to uh, like things to talk about for the episodes. So, yeah. like. I like I think up until like maybe like this week I was just like oh okay it's blood ceremony this week let me like you know figure out what that is let me put this on yeah. while I'm like working or whatever and I was like just blown away I was just like this is so cool yeah like I kept go I, like that's what I kept saying I was just like wow so cool like yeah, as I'm, I'm like doing my mundane tasks yeah I've actually I've listened to them for many years um and I don't even remember when I first discovered them. I think it was back in like the last FM days. Um, I, I don't if you know so, any old timers remember back in the day before we really had Spotify and Pandora. There was Last FM, which was like you know everybody that was like the best like online music streaming service at the time. And this is going back like probably like ten, twelve years ago now. At this point, you know, early twenty tens, um, and. Uh, it, it really had like a really good selection. Like it wasn't just like, Oh, you know, you know, Oh, you're going to put on like black Sabbath radio. We're going to play nothing but like black Sabbath and like five other bands. And that's all you're going to hear. Like they really had like, a, it was like deep cuts of, of shit and like stuff you would never hear anywhere else. And I discovered a lot of music through that. Um, like blood ceremony and Jex Thoth and, and a lot of different like doom metal bands. Um, and, uh, so like yeah, I, I I bought all their albums. Uh, I think the only albums I don't have are their their latest two, and that's only because I like switched to Spotify and I stopped buying uh, physical CDs. Mm. Um, but like yeah, I've I've been listening to them for a long time, and they've always been great. I haven't had the chance to see them live yet, which I would like to. Uh, apparently, in 2012, they supported Ghost on their uh, North America tour, which I'm sure I went to that show. So I don't know. Or maybe I just didn't go to that particular tour or something because I've seen Ghost a number of times as well. I've only seen Ghost once. I would love to see them again. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them at least five times. I want to say four or five times. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, and they always they always take great opening bands out with them too. You know. Yeah. So you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe I did see them on that tour. I don't remember. Because I remember, what, like, you... pretty much every... Well, 2012, uh, 2012 is when they 2012. went out with Ghost. Did I see that, too? Oh, crap. Oh, no. Now I don't remember. remember. No. No, it was not 20... No, it was not 2012. Because... Ancient Wisdom and Blood Sorry. No. No, we, when we saw Ghost, they were... Uh, person opened, which is another great... That's like, right. Like, rock yes. Doom band. Uh, which unfortunately does not exist anymore. I believe uh, Rosalie Cunningham, the lead singer... Uh, decided to end the band, and I think she's doing a solo out, like solo work now. But oh, okay. um, 
yeah uh but that that was also another great band uh let me see ancient wisdom and blood summary yeah i don't think i saw them on this tour because i i know i think i know what i would have because i like every time i go and see ghost well, if you ever I, see, well, I, well, knowing you, if you see like a like an opening band that you really like, you always buy the shirt. Like yeah. I've always, like there's been a few episodes, there's a few episodes. Yeah, my life is an episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a few. Um, there's been a few times where like I've where like we've hung out and you're wearing like some the shirt of like some band that was the opening band for like yeah. whoever. Like you go out of your, like unlike most people, you got out of your way to support every band if you like every band. Yeah. And you won't just approach them and say, oh, well, I'll buy well, your shirt next time when I never see you again. Exactly. No, I I like to buy. And well, and a lot of times, especially on, I was going to say on the ghost tours, almost every like, like almost unequivocally, every time I've seen ghost, their opener has been amazing. And I've like immediately bought the openers album as soon as I got home because they were so good. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, what, what, who was it? Um, when I saw them at, at, friggin uh at, at the playstation slash best buy slash whatever the hell it's called now the original nokia theater i saw them there years and years ago and they opened the, the king dude was the opener that night and i i like literally immediately bought the album i was like holy shit this is amazing and uh and and same thing with person like when we when we saw ghost where was that at i don't even remember what that was terminal five yeah yeah uh I immediately bought their person's album when I got home because I I was like so blown away by how good they were. So Ghost really does have like a knack for like getting good opening acts to to go out with them. So yeah. I'm I'm really not surprised that Blood Ceremony went out with them because they are you know on that level. Yeah, no, neither am I. I I is well they are not touring i just checked just to be sure but they yeah. uh they are not touring unfortunately they are still active so you know that's good yes not, so you know... that will happen they will they will tour eventually yeah i would definitely like to see them on tour uh so i don't well, maybe know when I will... they're coming out again well but... whenever they do maybe i will try to make a point i mean these days it's freaking hard because Tickets are just, you know, like everything else, it's just overpriced and expensive for no reason. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know we're, I know like the federal, like, I know like the Fed is like finally trying to do something like and like crack down on like antitrust all over the place for like Ticketmaster and Live Nation. And I hope that they freaking like get those bastards because they're the worst. Yeah. Um, But it's going to be quite a few years before there's really any changes anyway. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like Blood Ceremony would probably be, like, I feel like they would, they would, like, be able to, like, tour around, like, smaller venues, so it would, so, like, you'd get, like, a better chance to see them, maybe not, like, and maybe, like, some of, like, the medium-sized venues, too. Yeah. So there might be, like, a good chance to, like, yeah. really get, to really, like, get something in there. Um so hopefully they can. Yeah, I, I would. Oh, definitely the cathedral guy, by the way, is the head of the um of the of the festival that they're on. By the way, oh um, really? I mean the the festival, the the record label. He's the head oh. of the record label, um, Rise Above Records, which they're also on Metal um, Blade Records, which is interesting. You don't really see bands that are signed to like two labels at once. Yeah, my my guess is one of them is probably like. I, I'm guessing that it's probably like a distribution thing. Yeah, it, I would assume it's probably like maybe their European stuff is Rise Above Records, like in and then Metal Blade publishes in the U.S. Yeah, unless Metal Blade, unless Rise Above is like somehow a, unless like it's like a subsidiary. I don't think so. I think they're too I separate. Don't... Rise Above is like their headquarters is in London, so right. But I'm, I'm, I mean, they could own another label whose head, but and like the headquarters don't have to be in the U.S. Like they could just own it, but not like really have like a stake in it. It's almost like the parent company is Metal Blade, yeah. and then like Rise Above would just be like, you know, the like the child company. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Let me like see this. Now I'm curious. Oh my god, it's amazing that everything like it's ported over to Bandcamp ish now. <laughs> um like almost everything is like basically Bandcamp in in one way or another. Uh yeah, actually there is no info about this, so maybe not. Yeah, uh no, independent record label, blah, uh yeah. Never mind. It is not. I'm a schmuck. <laughs> All right. Well, well, with that, <laughs> if you think Chris is a fucking schmuck, <laughs> smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, but yeah. A anyway, if any of you folks enjoy blood ceremony, or if you like think blood ceremony is awesome, if there's something that we didn't get to touch on, um. Please let us know, especially if you're in blood ceremony. Then, like, say, hey, you guys got a bunch of shit wrong. Um, yeah. You guys are hacks and liars and thieves. And let me go on. I would like to go on your show to set the record straight. Or, hey, we're the dudes in blood ceremony, and you barely talked about us, and we're really upset. We're also Canadian, so, like, Upset to a Canadian is just like, well, we're already over it, but we would still like to be on the show because we think it's a good show. So if you're in blood <laughs> ceremony, just reach out to us at why does this exist show at gmail.com or just M us listens to this. So it's pretty easy to get a hold of us. We will respond. We're not backed up. No, not at all. In nope. fact, we need shit to do. Give us shit to do. So do a bunch of things. Give us money if you want. We don't care. But thank you all for listening. Um, if you really like Blood Ceremony, then like let us know in the comments and or, or and all that other like fancy stuff. Um, don't care. They were um, they were their their re most recent album, uh, The Old Rays Remain, was nominated for a Metal Storm Awards. Uh, in the hard rock category, but uh, they didn't end up winning. Uh, oh. It was like a voting based thing, and I guess they didn't get enough votes. Well, oh, that's lame. I mean, that stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't know how it works, so I don't know if it's like fan driven or like. Uh, it looks like it was a like fan driven board. metal storm oh, thing. Yeah, metal I mean, storm rewards if, it, if it's all right, I mean, if it's fan driven, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of the of like the people they who got, know who you are. They got third um, place. All uh, right. Green Lung, this he heathen land was first. I don't ever, I've never heard of Green Lung. I'm not sure who they are, but uh, Kveller Talk and Ling was second. So, oh, I mean, they're, they're up there. Good. Exactly. I was going to say they're up there with good company. It's not like, you know, they lost to some douchebags or something. Yeah, no, I mean, the good thing about like fan driven metal stuff, at least, is like you're going to have like a, it's not like a popularity. Well, I mean, it's a popularity contest, but not like in the way that normal things run where like, where like all the babies have been kissed and all that jive where like it, like the fans legitimately care and like you usually yeah. get a pretty good list. It's not like a magazine where like the magazine pageantry and the beauty contests are just like yeah. nonsense where it's the same ten people. If it's fan driven, you usually get like a good list from like metal stuff. So well, it, I trust okay. that list. I would okay. I, I would try Green Lung. Apparently Green Lung is also a stoner metal, doom metal, hard rock band, so very much in the same vein as Blood Ceremony. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, so it's not like, you know, again, like, they just lost to some, like, popular band that has nothing to do with, you know, just because, you know, it's not like the the the, the Grammys or anything like that, where, like, bullshit happens all the time. Or, like, the friggin' Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is the biggest... Oh, my God. The, 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 the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is the worst. It really is. Like... Ugh, we uh, we should just do a whole episode on the on like the rock and roll thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just bury it. Just bury yeah. the fucking awards. I mean, let's face it. You and I are never ever going to be in the rock and roll hall of fame. So no. like, we might as well like shit on it as like hard and stinky as we can. Yep. Unless we we fucking write some like one hit wonder that's like not even like metal 
or rock, and then I we'll mean, somehow just magically get in there because they just put popular. It's like a literally a popularity contest. But rock I mean, and roll. Fam. I mean, we'll just do it in like canon and D major, and we'll like we'll, we'll like have it release in like fifty something years when we'll j- and like we'll be like dead, so we'll just get like a posthumous induction. But also, we will since like we'll be in the future future when we die presumably they'll have like better cryotherapy technology and cryo freezing so we'll be like just frozen heads and they oh, can God. like resurrect us with walt disney yeah and then like and they'll attach us to like a walt disney like mecha evil like thing and like that that then we'll just like climb up on the walls and destroy it'll the be... rock and hole hall of fame from the inside and it'll be that's, like that episode that's what of... we'll do of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where like Carl's head gets or his whole body gets destroyed, it's just his head, and then they're gonna put him on the giant robot walker. But they're like, Beatwad's like, I, that's not a good idea. You fucking, and then <laughs> Twilight's like, Yeah, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> they they like attach it to like a friggin' like remote controlled dump truck instead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty useful. Yeah, I was hoping for the I was hoping for like the robot chicken Walt Disney like mech for that, oh, like, yeah is like trying to eat Cuban children. Oh yeah. Except I don't yeah, want yeah. I was watching <laughs> that episode recently actually. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I I not that I I, I don't want to eat Cuban Cuban children though. Cuban food is delicious, but we'll leave the children and the adults and no cannibalism for me. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Anyway, this has been why, another episode of Why Does This Exist? I'm Chris and I'm Rob. And remember, question everything. Good night everybody.